Okay, there's a slight chance that today's video is gonna ruffle some feathers and I apologize in advance. So there's this opinion that goes around the audio community that dynamic microphones are better for people in untreated spaces. And the idea is that because dynamic microphones are inherently less sensitive than their condenser counterparts, that they somehow pick up less, less noise, noise from the environment. And the crazy thing is, is I hear so many smart people in the audio space giving this advice. Dynamic microphones are not better for your audio, but they're actually in fact more noisy. And this argument is missing some serious nuance. Now, dynamic microphones are considered less sensitive because as that sound pressure level comes in, it has to move the diaphragm as well as that coil. That's why they call it a moving coil microphone. And because that coil adds a lot of weight to the diaphragm system, it takes a lot of sound pressure levels to start moving, which means that it's a heavier whole assembly, which means it's less sensitive. And that's where most people jump to their conclusion that dynamic microphones will pick up less noise in their space. Now, this is the nuance that's often overlooked. The noise in our space is a set level. There's nothing that we can do to bring down the noise in our space short of acoustic treatment. So this means that the level between my voice and the level of the noise in the room is fixed. As one comes up, so does the other. As one goes down, the other does as well. This is what we call signal to noise ratio. There's nothing that I can do to change this signal to noise ratio short of eliminating noise or getting closer to the microphone. Getting closer to the microphone, more signal, the signal to noise ratio improves. As I back away, I blend in with the noise in the room. So the signal to noise ratio uh, gets worse. Dis improves, what's the opposite of improve? Re lessons? Why can't I think of that word? Weird. Anyways, now this is the part that I think gets forgotten a lot is that because dynamic microphones are inherently less sensitive, they require more gain at the preamp. So to match my voice on both a condenser and a dynamic microphone, the dynamic mic will require more gain. Well, guess where a massive source of noise comes from in your signal chain? It's the preamp. It's the gain. That's where you introduce a lot of noise to your signal. So microphones like the Shure SM7B, which everyone raves for, for using it as a streaming microphone or for podcasting is one of the most gain hungry microphones on the market, meaning you have to completely crank your gain to get that microphone loud enough, which means you're introducing a ton of noise into your signal. So what does have an effect on the noise in our signal? Well, there are two things. One is gain. So we want a microphone that has high sensitivity because that means we can keep our gain really low. And the second thing, which has more to do with ambient noise is polar pattern. Really, that's the only tool that we have at our disposal to eliminate background noise is using polar pattern, short of using like noise rejection software, stuff like that. So which polar pattern then is the best for rejection? Well, to answer that, let's turn to our friends in the live sound world because live sound engineers are the absolute most genius human beings when it comes to rejection. No, not that kind of rejection. I'm talking about audio rejection. And almost every mic that's used on a stage is a cardioid microphone. You can also go to hypercardioid, which will pick up a little bit more from behind the microphone, but a little bit less than cardioid from the side of the microphone. So if you're using a keyboard, I would recommend a cardioid microphone because it's gonna reject everything from behind. If there's nothing behind your source, a hypercardioid may help to address some of those side issues as well. So that's it, a sensitive microphone so you can keep your gain down with a cardioid pattern to reject the background noise is really the best tool you can use. <laughs> wow, okay, uh, this looks stupid, but let's go. But what I'm gonna do is play a tone through a speaker and I'm gonna get all of these microphones set up to the same input level, adjusting their gain to get them there. So of course, the two dynamic microphones are gonna take a little bit more gain than the two condenser microphones. And then I'm gonna come back and talk through these and you'll notice that as I talk, the level should be the same through each of them. Also, the level of the noise should be the same through each of them. And to test that, I'm gonna play some music from a speaker over there behind the camera. I'm gonna turn on my dryer, which is one room over that way. Uh, let's see what other noise things I can make. Maybe we'll just do that. So a dryer and some music playing. Hopefully there'll be some audible noise and you can hear that it's gonna be hopefully the exact same in each mic. That's my hypothesis, but we're gonna test this. And of course, to anyone saying, this doesn't look very scientific, it's not, this is not at all. You're along for the ride with me. Uh, we'll see if this works. <laughs> So the first microphone here, this is the Moano PD100 XLR. It's around $50. And uh, this microphone is actually really nice for the small form factor. I really do like it. Um, sits on the boom quite nice. And this is the one you're listening to throughout the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and be quiet for a second. Okay, next is our first condenser. This is the Universal Audio SP1 condenser microphone. A pair of these cost $299. And I did a video on these if you wanna check out these microphones as well. But let's go ahead and take a listen to some silence.
Okay, the third option here is a dynamic microphone. This is Old Faithful. This is the Shure SM58, which runs for about $100. Built like a freaking hammer. Gotta love these things. But let's go ahead and take a listen to some silence. And the fourth and final option here is a condenser microphone. This is a Peluso P12, which runs for about $2,000. And let's go ahead and take a listen to this. This is a large diaphragm condenser. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really struggling to hear a difference in the noise quality between each of these microphones. They sound a little bit different, but they're also just in different spots. They're different microphones. They're gonna sound a little bit different. Okay, let's take a look at these audio files. Before I do that, I just wanna show you, this is using a cheap interface, what happens with gain when you crank it. Um, that's why it's really important to use a microphone that has a uh, high output and a, a good sensitivity because then you don't have to crank your gain so much. But anyways, beside the point. So what you're looking at here are the four different audio files that we recorded during that section. And you can see right here is the registration. So where I was blasting that, um, that frequency. Ideally, if you're doing this properly, you're going to use like a full frequency. This is only really giving you a snapshot of this process. Um, and you do some fancy software to calibrate the microphones to the same place. But I don't really have that tech available. So this is kind of the best we can do. This is microphone one, which is the Mayono, and it's sitting around negative 38.97. Uh, we jump over to the uh, SP1, and that's at negative 37.9. So about within a decibel. Uh, this is the Shure SM58. 38.14, so it's yeah, right on par. And this is 37.64. So we're within about half a decibel uh, between these four microphones. Again, it's not super scientific, but within half a decibel, you're not gonna really have a discernible difference. Let's go ahead and look at the noise because this is what we're concerned about. Uh, this is to prove this point here. Now, one small thing, I'm gonna avoid this second clip here because if you look, the music was actually in a different spot in the song and it didn't have the hi-hat going as you probably noticed when you watched those clips. Uh, so let's just look at the two dynamics and a condenser microphone here. But let's go ahead and highlight a section of this. Again, we're gonna look at this total RMS level. This is gonna tell us how loud that file got during that time. So let's take a highlighted section here of the Moana microphone and we're looking at negative 55.16. Let's jump over to the SM58 negative 56, so slightly quieter than the Moano in terms of noise. And let's jump to the condenser. So this should be a much worse figure. Negative 57. I'm, they're completely on par as predicted. Uh, in fact, the condenser has the best performance at 57.68, 57.2, 57.5, yeah. So the condenser is showing us the least amount of noise. And I mean, we're within half a decibel. That's not really, it's kind of negligible. We're in an untreated space. It's not really a scientific experiment. But I think that this does prove at the very least that a dynamic microphone is not better in an untreated space. So what microphone is best then for podcasters or streamers? There's a few things that go into this debate. There's proximity effect, there's durability, there's form factor, which like, as I mentioned with this Mayono, uh, what is this, PD100 XLR, it is really tiny and it's easy to move around. I, I quite like this little form factor. It'd be way better than something chunky like this $2,000 Peluso P12 here. But if the main thing that you're trying to accomplish is addressing noise in your signal, the very best thing that you could do is use a condenser microphone, not a dynamic, with very low self noise, with a high sensitivity, letting you turn your gain down, and that's in a cardioid polar pattern. But mostly, you gotta consider the sound. Don't be a goof. That's the most important, you're not a goof. But just, you gotta listen to the sound. They're microphones, that's what they do, they make sound. Go listen.